All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with a fight review. So we're going to Tokyo, Japan for deep 112th impact. We're going to the microweight division. Satoko Shinashi, a legend in Japanese MMA, coming in at 38-4, and four, taking on a much younger and much less experienced Reina Kobayashi, coming in at 2-2. Two and two. Now, this is Shinashi's first fight since December of 2019. So she's been out of the game for a while. And she turned 46 the week before this fight. Shinashi made her pro debut all the way back in, uh, let me see here, 2000 and December of 2001. So she's been at it for a while. And just coming back off of a period of inactivity during COVID, she didn't want to train, I guess. I'm not going to go into that. Anyway, let's get into the fight because I was curious how it was going to go. So first round starts and uh, Reina Kobayashi came forward and she was coming forward, but she was catching Shinashi with a few counter rights. They looked halfway decent. Uh, the fighters clinched. Uh, Satoko went for kind of like an Imanari role at about a minute in. She looked for a leg lock, but Kobayashi was able to escape and both stood up. Uh, Shinashi, after a bit, did get a throw, but again, Kobayashi was right back up, and there was some clinch work on the fence, and Shinashi started throwing some knees. Um, she went for a hip toss, failed, it got reversed by Reina, and Reina decided, I'm not going to stay on the ground with you, I'm going to get back to the feet. Uh, up on the feet, they you know started some range striking, Shinashi was working some low kicks, uh, Reina was working her punches. I'll be honest, neither of these two ladies are very good strikers. You know, they both look stiff, not a lot of accuracy. One part, I almost, I literally laughed out loud. Shinashi went for a spinning back fist, missed so bad, she went off balance and fell to her butt. <laughs> and Kobayashi was nice enough to let her back up. I, I guess she figured that was embarrassing enough. Um, but after after. A little bit, Shinashi, she started landing some right hands on Kobayashi. So she started finding her accuracy. Uh, Reina flew a, fl a flurry. Uh, and then Shinashi caught it with a kind of right hand. And that was pretty much the end of the first round. So second round came. Uh, Kobayashi came forward again. And Shinashi started throwing the effective counter punches in the second round which was a nice change of pace. And then Shinashi got a throw at about the 35 second mark. Took Reina Kobayashi's back, started throwing some punches, but Kobayashi didn't stay on the ground for very long. She stood up and, you know, Shinashi kind of just let it go off the back. They clinched. Um, Reina, you know, punched her way out of it. Started landing some punches. And then uh, Shinashi went for another throw, but it got reversed. Kobayashi stood over her, started throwing some punches. Um, then she decided to go into Shinashi's guard, landed some punches from top, in uh, I believe it was half guard. Shinashi, uh, you know, she turned her hips out, went for an armbar attempt, but Kobayashi was able to get out of it pretty quickly. Started punching uh, from the turtle position. She had uh, Shinashi turtled up and started throwing some punches, but Shinashi stood up. Um, Reina, Reina threw a knee at her. Shinashi got another trip at about the four-minute mark. Uh, Reina got back up right away, though. Uh, she shot for a double leg, resisted by Shinashi against the fence. And the round closed with Kobayashi going for it, still holding on to the legs, going for a double leg. It went to the judges, and all three saw it for Satoko Shinashi. Now, at first... I wasn't sure I agreed with the decision. Um, one thing that Deep does, Deep and Deep Jewels do, is because most of the fights are only two rounds, especially for the ladies, is that if it's a draw, they go to the judge must make a decision. And I think the judges made a must decision for Shinashi here. Now, at first, I wasn't sure I agreed with that decision. However, now that I think about it more, the better effective offense was mostly done by Shinashi. 
who got multiple takedowns. Even if she wasn't able to keep her down, she got multiple takedowns. She had some effective striking in the second round. So uh, the, the bigger moments went to Satoko Shinashi, so I will give it to her. Um, this is another fight that, again, I am against only two rounds. I know the reason that they do it because, you know, most of these ladies are only part-time fighters. I thought three rounds would have been more interesting. So I'd, I'd like to see, I'd like to see a rematch. I think Kobayashi would actually take the rematch. Now that she knows that she can counter Shinashi, a lot of what Shinashi does, that she can get up more effectively, I think she would have a better time in the rematch. But the important thing about this fight was that at 46 years old, Satoko Shinashi is back. But being that she's 46, it's hard to say what this will mean for her future. Um, I'm not sure she has her sights set on gold or titles, but it seems like she's going to take it one step at a time. I read a, a pre-fight interview with her. Seems like she's happy to be back and taking it one step at a time. And she wasn't sure she was going to come back at her age. Uh, for things to work on, okay, let's talk about Shin Toko Shinashi for a second. She's 46 years old. She's never had good striking. At this point, she's never going to. And at, at 46, it's hard to find anything that she is likely to improve on. So I'm not even going to go there with her. I, I just don't have anything for her to really work on that I feel would that she's going to work on and improve. For Kobayashi, work on that head movement. You know, she was getting countered in the second round. And I think if she moved her head a little more, she, she could have avoided some of those counters. Now for fights to make, for sticking with Reina Kobayashi, Momo Koyamazaki currently has a 3-3 three and three record and she has a fight a week from now from the time of this recording, at Deep Jewels 40. We'll see if she wins that. I think that'd be a good one. Uh, Yamazaki, or excuse me, Kobayashi's definitely a, a, a microweight, needs to stick at microweight, and there's not a lot. So Yamazaki is around that experience level, same skill level. I think uh, Kobayashi's actually a more of a tactical fighter than Yamazaki, so that'd be a good one. For Satoko Shinashi, now, if she wants a title fight, because she used to be the deep microweight champ. She could petition for a title shot against the deep microweight champ, oh, Sari Oshima, which honestly I feel she would get destroyed in. Or, this one's more interesting. Yasuko Tamada is still active. She just fought last year in July. Shinashi is 46. Tamada is 55. So they're both older ladies. And you could have the battle of elder stateswomen of Japanese mixed martial arts. That would be an interesting one. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Deep 112th Impact. Satoko Shinashi defeats Reina Kobayashi via decision. Uh, the fight is not yet available to the greater public. It was pay-per-view. The video should be out in a week or so. Uh, let me know your thoughts on it. If you've already seen it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, if you like the vid, please give it a like. And while you're at it, go and subscribe to WMAC Now, the best, most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.